Good morning. <clears throat> this message uh, I prepared for last Sabbath, and because uh, last week was the end of uh, Adventist Health Week, and uh, I wanted to talk about health, but uh, we got our dates crossed up in Murray. Murray took the sermon, and I really appreciated it. It was such a blessing. Uh, so you, today's uh, message is about health. And uh, two questions I wanted to think about. Can I just put that PowerPoint up, please, um, Bill? Oh, sorry. The, um, God wants us to be healthy. And uh, he says there, if you look in your Bible, in John, 3 John 2, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting on well. And uh, so God wants us to be healthy. And the question, a couple of questions I wanted to ask whether, were, I've lost my picture, hang on. I went and deleted it, sorry. <laughs> the World Health Organization, these two questions were, what is health and what is the purpose of health? And the World Health Organization in 1946, they made this definition and they haven't changed it. A state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So, you know, I think it's a good definition. A state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. But what is the purpose of health? Is health just for us to live long and prosper? You know, there's some people that the world would be better off if they didn't live longer, <laughs> right? <laughs> and just amazing to think that God has made provision. You know, he's given us information that, that even his enemies can live longer. That's quite amazing when you think about it. You know, even Hezekiah, we talked about Hezekiah this morning. Hezekiah, when he had his health problem, he was going to die, he... he um, Turn, turn to it, if you will, Second Chronicles 32. He asked God for, to not let him die. Second Chronicles 32. It's one of those books that's a little bit tricky sometimes. Second Chronicles 32 and starting at verse 33. I'm just of a... Uh, I've left out the story, but you know the story of how he, he, God gave him 15 more years, right? When God heard his prayer and said, okay, I'll give you 15 more four years. Now, eventually he did die. Let's have a look at verse 33 of chapter 32. Hezekiah rested with his fathers and was buried on the hill where the tombs of David's descendants are. All Judah and the people of Jerusalem honoured him when he died, and Manasseh, his son, succeeded him as king. You remember Manasseh? Probably the worst king Israel ever had. Look at the next verse in the first verse of 33. Manasseh was how old when he became king? He was 12 years old. So he was born in those 15 years that God gave Hezekiah when he asked him not to let him die. So there is a downside <laughs> to living longer, you know, even Hezekiah's. Israel could possibly have been better off without Manasseh's leadership. But, you know, most Adventists are vegetarians, and I wanted to ask you, when someone asks you you're a vegetarian, how do you answer? Most of us say, oh, for health reasons. Or, you know, it's healthier, I want to live longer. But what do you want to live longer for? Just taking up space? What about being a blessing to the world? What about giving glory to God? What about working in his vineyard? So I hope, you know, as an introduction, I hope you're well and happy. And, you know, wellness and happiness kind of go together, don't you? If you're sick and happy, I want to see you after. It's actually hard to worship when you're sick. And maybe that's one of the reasons God wants us to be healthy. And talking to Seventh-day Adventists about health is like a bit like trying to sell children's books to a school teacher. I don't know if you've ever done that. Some of you have. It's quite a challenge. 
And, and I think the reason is because they know so much, you know. Adventists know a lot about health. So uh, I'm up here to talk to you about health, and it's a bit of a challenge. But I wanted to give you a little a bit of an illustration. June's going to come and help me with this. Hopefully you've got a little piece of paper in your hand uh, that you were given, and uh, she's going to help you out with that. I'll give you a few minutes. Hopefully you've all got yourself um, a piece of paper. Most of you have, I think. Um, who likes planning a party? I really enjoy it. And just lately I've had a couple because my children have had um, children having their first birthdays. But at home, um, we're going to pretend that we're having a party today. And you've got lots of special guests coming, one particular special guest. And I'd love you to take your piece of paper in the next couple of seconds and write a menu up for me. Do it how you would, what you'd love to present on your table. At the same time, you can think about the de decorations, but in particular, what food you were going to um, dish up for your guests. Three minutes. John says you've got three minutes. I can see some heads down, or is it really that hard to think? An entree? Mains? Or oh, in a dessert? see some giggles. How are you going? Are you just about there or does it take a bit more longer than that? Probably for me it would take a couple of weeks actually to figure it out. Oh, sounds like our guests arrived. Um, if you've got a Bible with you, would you like to open up to Revelation 3 verse 20? You may already know it. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. So now that you know who's coming to dinner, any of you want to change the menu? <laughs> Was that entrapment? <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Did anyone change it? Just now? <laughs> I wonder why we do that when Jesus is coming to dinner. Do you think he's interested in your health? And your lifestyle? Do you think he's interested in what's on your plate? I think he is interested in our, in our lifestyle because he wants to give us the best life possible. And he said that in John 10.10. 10, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And I think it's important because the way we live, you know, our health affects a lot of things. It affects the way we die. It affects how long we live. It affects how well we thrive. It affects the state of our body, how we look even. And it affects our work, doesn't it? 
That's one of the biggest nightmares for employers, is sick workers. It affects our relationships and other people's impressions of us, and it even affects the environment. But I think one of the most important is it affects our witness. And I don't feel real qualified at the moment to talk about health. I'm not exactly a picture of good health, but um, as a Seventh-day Adventist, I am qualified to talk about health. Because Adventists are actually one of the healthiest groups in the world. And um, it's a strange paradox. We have this group of people preaching that the world's about to end, and yet we are doing a whole lot of things try and make the world a better place and people's health better. We have the largest private hospital system in the world and the biggest hospital in the world belongs to our church. But helping people's worthwhile, isn't it? Just for its own sake. And uh, I've come to realise that God doesn't withhold good things from people that don't believe in him. He doesn't resent unbelievers having a good life. He's just so amazing. But why are Adventists so healthy? Well, the scientific community are busy studying that question. There's well over 200 scientific papers that have been published on the Adventist lifestyle with very interesting results. But here's six reasons that they're discovering Adventists have the edge in our health. Faith is a big deal. People that have a religious faith hope for the future, they suffer less stress and depression, and they live longer than those without. Isn't that interesting? They live about nine years longer just from being a religious a believer. God designed us with a space in us that only he can fit into. Ecclesiastes 3.11. You know the verse? Ecclesiastes 3.11 says... God has set eternity in the hearts of men. God put it there. And uh, when we let him into our life, we give him permission to take charge. And when he's not there, we live with an empty space there. And so knowing where we come from, why we're here, where we're going, it removes a lot of anxiety from a person's life, doesn't it? And even when difficulties and disasters come along, it helps you understand them even better, doesn't it? Faith holds on. Community is another reason. Uh, people that have a good community, a strong community, they feel like they belong and uh, that they're appreciated by others. They're always happier and live longer. God designed us as social beings. In uh, Okinawa, Japan, they've studied the people there. There's a lot of people there live to 100. And... One of the reasons they believe is that they have a very close community and, and there's a Japanese word called ikigai. It means the reason for living. And a lot of them, their reason for living is their community. They are... Uh, and churches are communities, aren't they? They provide that reason for living. Family is another good uh, thing that we foster. And when we cultivate and strengthen that basic unit of society... It's good for us. God invented the family. And another place that I uh, have a lot of 100-year-olds is Sardinia. And their big thing is the family. Every weekend they get together and have a big meal, a whole extended family. And they make family important. So that's really good for your health. Healthy diet always comes into it, doesn't it? Three times a day we put things into our body so you'd expect it to make a difference <laughs> to your health. And we shouldn't be surprised that eating mostly plants, as God said, is better for our body than eating uh, animal cadavers. I, still, I actually didn't write it down, but I should have. Remember what God said at the beginning to Adam and Eve, what their diet was going to be? Genesis 1. Don't ask me why I didn't write it down. It should be there. Genesis 1, 29. 
God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be yours for food. So, you know, man's original diet was plants. And there's a whole lot of stuff that you can buy now that, you know, like 30,000 products on the supermarket shelves that didn't exist 50 years ago. Some of us can remember that. And a lot of them, you know, if you came back in 50 years, they'd still be all right. There's so many preservatives in them. And, you know, Okinawa and Sardinia both also have plant-based diets. And so that makes a difference to them. Another reason Adventists live well and long is Sabbath. They take a whole day off every week and just switch business off and meditate on God and his world and fellowshipping together and worship. And uh, it must make a difference. Jesus said that God made the Sabbath for man, didn't he? In Mark 2, 27. So people live longer when they have a Sabbath. And another reason, the last one, there's probably more, but the last one they, they've discovered is service. People that help others are healthier and live longer. So serving others. God set us the example, didn't he? Serving others is good for our health. But when you talk to Adventists about health, the subject of eating comes up a lot, doesn't it? What's good for us, what's not good for us? Why is that? Well, here's two reasons. We've, we've got a lot of information. We've got, like, you know, the latest information which we've had for 150 years, right? And we also have generations of people passing it on to their children. And Adventists are the most studied group of people on the earth when it comes to diet and health. And there's a good reason for that. Uh, virtually no Adventists smoke or drink alcohol. So the scientists can actually study diet, because 60% of us are vegetarians, right? So they can study diet, the effects of diet, without those kind of negative effects of alcohol and smoking because there's such strong effects they skew your study so they've been studying Adventists for a long time and big studies like tens of thousands of people over 30 years that's the way to find out uh, find out the effects of diet and health and most of the things you see now like five plus a day you know eat your colors big posters you see have come out of those Adventist health studies. But Hippocrates, who goes way back, he's the father of what? Medicine. Hippocrates said, let food be your medicine. That's really advanced thinking, isn't it? That's 400 BC. <laughs> and if you haven't caught on to uh, plant-based eating, you're sort of depriving yourself and you're a bit behind the times. Let me show you a couple of experts talking about this. Hopefully we've got sound. It's not your fault, I don't think. Let me go back. How are we doing, Trick? Generation. Hey guys, 
What about the fact that these diseases and other cultures, some of them, many of them, don't even exist? You ever hear about prevention? I mean, it, it, and one of the problems there is that prevention is not very glamorous. Surgery is glamorous. I mean, look at all the attention that we're giving to the, the people, the artificial heart. I'm one man with one artificial heart. You remove all of the media, hour by hour, what was happening. Well, what about the fact that maybe this guy could have been prevented from ever having this disease? And it doesn't take it, and it doesn't take rocket science. It just says, here's the food, foods that are going to kill you and injure you and give you disease. Here the ones that are. But if you've got an industry that is making a fortune on selling these foods that are creating disease, we've got a conflict. One more. My dad, um, my dad died two days off 80 and, uh, in 2007 and uh, he became a Seventh-day Adventist about in his early 30s, 32-ish. But I was amazed when we took him up to the family grave. There was There were his siblings and his mum. His mum died at 72, but his siblings died at 49, 51, uh, 48, 59. And uh, Dad died at 80. And, you know, they say you can gain, if you live healthy, you can gain 10 years. But I think Dad gained like almost 30 on some of his siblings by changing his lifestyle. And uh, so... You know, eating dead animals doesn't seem like a real good thing to do to me, but I, everyone, everyone, um, 
is at their own place, aren't they? <laughs> and Adventists don't make it a rule that you have to be a vegetarian. But we recommend it. And um, if we never had freezing works, you know you'd have to do it yourself. <laughs> and you know you can't get a tour of the freezing works because they know that if you did that, they'd probably probably put you off their products. And the other thing, you know, we're preparing for heaven, aren't we? Heaven, there's no death. So, you know, we kind of should be moving in that direction, I believe. Animals suffer similar diseases to humans, and they do, you can get them from eating animals. And I've heard people say, you know, plants get diseases too. They do. But have you ever heard of someone suffering from uh, codlin moth or curly leaf? <laughs> So food's a big deal in health, but it's not everything. So we need to remember that. Our mental attitude is a big thing, isn't it? Proverbs 3, 7 to 9. Solomon says, Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So you're, there's other things, not just food the way you exercise, the environment you live in, and very important, your spiritual life. Being wise in God's ways will bring health and nourishment to your bones. Another time Solomon said, Light in a messenger's eyes, this is Proverbs 15.30, Light in a messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart, and good news gives health to the bones. That's why... We preach the good news, isn't it? Jesus has taken care of your sin problem. How many of you can say that your health improved when you gave your life to God? Yeah, I can. Many people believe that 80 to 90 percent of disease originates in the mind. And uh, that's quite amazing when you think about it. And I knew a man who used to, when he got sick, He'd go for a walk. That was his treatment. And the sicker he was, the further he walked. And uh, it seemed to work, you know. But there's a lot of voices nowadays, isn't there? So many voices telling us how we can be healthy. And uh, so pretty much you have to work it out for ourselves to sort out what's true and what's not. And, but perhaps your own story is the best way Best advertisement, right, for healthy living that you have. My story begins in 1983, my first uh, uh, thoughts on health. I became a Seventh-day Adventist, I became a Christian in 85. But two years before that, I was a tobacco slave and drank alcohol, used other things as well. It weren't good for you. And, but one day I came, arrived at work just completely random, I think it was a Thursday, and the thought came into my mind that I was a slave to tobacco. And I hadn't ever thought about this before. I'd smoked for quite a few years. And uh, this thought wouldn't go out of my mind. You're a slave, you know. Um, you haven't got control of your own life. And my whole being kind of rose up against this. I'm uh, going to take charge of this. So I quit smoking that day. I just threw them the rubbish, brand new packet. And I said, no more. Uh, and every time the urge came, you know, it does come regularly. <laughs> every time the urge came, I was more determined, you know. And I'd tried many times to give up smoking, but this change of mind happened to me. And I believe it was God impressing me. This was years before, two years before I even thought about God. And, you know, it wasn't long. Alcohol went out. Cannabis went out. And... So God was working on my life before I even knew it. And in 85, when I gave my life to the Lord, I also quit caffeine. I thought, it's a drug. No drugs. So I quit caffeine. I started drinking water instead of um, a cup of tea at smoko time, you know. And I was amazed to find my colds and flus went away. So, um, you yeah, know, that was really interesting. Exodus 15, 26. Let's have a look. 
Exodus 15.26. This is Moses. He said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in, in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. And the Archaeologists know that the Egyptians suffered from lots of diseases and they're pretty similar to what we, many people suffer today. 